Ladies and gentlemen, Dina Rodriguez. First of all, thank you so much for coming to this amazing event. I'm like so beyond excited. Like I get the chance to be on the main stage. What? Uh, I'm a little bit tired. I drank a little bit too much, but I'm ready to talk because it's my favorite thing to do. And also I'm talking about myself, my favorite subject. So today I'm going to tell you about how to do more of what works. So I'm going to be the black sheep of the conference and talk about how quantity can sometimes be better than quality. Oh shit. <laughs> Um, so pretty much I'm going to help you guys just figure out how to be posting more consistently on social media. Because raise your hand if you're fed up with social media right now. Did your likes go down? Mine too. I'm pissed. Mm. <laughs> I have like 18,000 followers and like two people liked it. Okay, I'm getting a complex. <laughs> so <laughs> let me introduce myself once again. I'm Dina Rodriguez, full-time hand lettering artist and illustrator based out of Portland, Oregon. Okay, so when I say something like, I have 18,000 followers on Instagram, what does that make you think about me? Seriously. Something good, at least once, maybe twice. Some of you might be like, oh my God, she has like 18,000 followers, right? And some of you might be like, she, girl hasn't even hit 20K yet, who does she think she is, <laughs> right? But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. But what does matter is the 10 to 20,000 visitors I get to my website a month because that's where the money is at. I'm not getting paid every time someone likes something on Instagram or Dribbble or any of that stuff, but all of the things where I get money, like selling my zines, my products, being able to get hired by clients, that's all about my website. So that first number, I don't really care about. Now, before we get into the main shipping. I got a contest for you. Okay, so they mentioned I have a lettering adventures series. I'm on issue 16 right now, so I've been teaching all different kinds of lettering styles from like Victorian and Western and Art Nouveau and even uh, what I like to call a fat bottom bitch script. <laughs> um, you guys could actually win all 16 of them just by talking about me. So my tag is letter shop with two P's and an E, like an old ice cream parlor mostly because the one that didn't have two P's in me was taken by the domain. It's like an old print shop from the 90s that isn't doing anything with it. I was super pissed off about it. So all you gotta do is mention me on either Instagram or Twitter. Those are my favorite platforms of choice. Also, Dribble is not gonna work for that. Um, and then you also get free consultations so you guys can make more money using an advertising channel like social media so you can actually, I don't know, make a living off of this whole art thing. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about why you're not making any money. We have these, these diseases of the creative mind that we talk about literally all the time, but we're still being affected by it. The first one being perfectionist syndrome. All right, who here just spends countless amounts of time analyzing everything they post before they post it? Yeah, that's what I thought. It's, I like to think of this phrase that done is better than perfect, because for some reason we, we think that we're robots. And we all feel very broken right now because it's not working out for us. And perfectionism and being perfect doesn't freaking exist. So why do we keep trying to be that thing? So what I'm saying is let's have this lack of decisiveness just get thrown out the window and finally be able just to stop giving a fuck. <laughs> like why can't I just post things when they're not 100% complete or done or perfect? Because as we know, in the life of social media, no matter what algorithms come around, no matter what platforms are happening, consistency is what matters. You're not gonna get anywhere if you're only posting once a week, or God forbid, once or twice a month on Instagram. No one's gonna see it. Especially now, since like, literally you're getting 1% engagement, no matter how many followers you have. It's pretty messed up. So we just need to stop trying to be destructive robots and just hit that publish button because that's the only thing that's really gonna help us break through the noise and get our name out there. <sighs> the second is shiny object syndrome. This is the lack of focus. So I don't know about you, but when I take a break from work, I go look at other people's work. <laughs> and that's not a really nice break. I should just be watching TV or go for a walk. I hear outside is nice. I don't visit it very often. <laughs> um, but we go through this vicious cycle, right? We have an endless list of to-dos, and that list isn't getting any shorter, so why do we feel the need to add more stuff to it? I'm saying, like, we go through, okay, you're looking through the feed, you see something amazing, you're like, oh, light bulb, I'm gonna make that, but better. 
or you gave me an idea to create something else. And then you get really excited. You're like, oh, I can make money. Or maybe go viral, <laughs> right? And then you're midway. Deadlines are stacking up. Okay. <laughs> you're start the walls are closing in. You're freaking out. And then you get more pissed off at yourself than ever. And that's why a lot of us have a shit ton of unfinished projects just either shoved in a drawer or in a, an inbox, right? And I want that to stop happening. You are too amazing. Your talent is too awesome. Your skill, the way you see the world, I want to see it. I don't want it to just be buried in an inbox somewhere. So we just need to get more comfortable. And next time you have a shiny object, just add it to the list. Focus on one thing at a time and then just get to it. If it's a good enough idea that you're still excited about it a week later, then maybe then you truly have a good something there. Last one is imposter syndrome. <sighs> Unfortunately, <laughs> this is all about a lack of confidence. Now I know the advice, just be yourself. Sounds like something your parents say to you when you're feeling out of place. But that's the thing. We're artists, we're creatives, we're supposed to be out of place. We're supposed to be weird and we're supposed to let that freak flag fly because that is how we're gonna get attention. That's what clients hire us for. We can't just mimic everybody else and follow the trends. We have to lead our own path and create our own trends so other people follow us, admire us, so clients get more eyes on our work and they get impressed by us. Because we just have to stop wearing a mask all the time and trying to portray the best versions of ourselves because it's all bullshit. Now, if you think of it like this, the majority of the people you follow online are probably other creatives and, and designers. So it stands to reason that the majority of the people following you are creatives and designers. So it's no wonder we all feel super fake because we're only putting like the glossy, look at the perfect $20,000 lease on my office and oh, I got the new iPad Pro and look how shiny and new it is. So all the rest of us who are still like using our kitchen as a desk <laughs> and <laughs> are still using, I don't know, good old fashioned piece of paper and pencil to draw, of course you're gonna feel like you're not doing it right. But you are, as long as you're making it and putting it out there, you're doing everything right. All right, so let's talk about quantity over quality because quantity isn't always a bad thing. Number one, panties. You can never have too many panties. <laughs> Seriously, I mean it. You, I've never been, been like, oh, there's too many panties in this drawer. Like that's never been something. And I get really excited when it's like buy five for 20 deals at Target. I'm like, oh snap, let's get on that. <laughs> but, and also more junk protection is always good, right? But other than that, we still have practice in posting. The more you practice, it's just gonna equal more growth, right? And then posting, it's more content to advertise because that's what social media is for. It's an advertising channel. So that way, people know you, they follow you, and they stay up to date with you. That's the whole point. So it doesn't matter if your style changes in a few months, you're not gonna alienate your followers because you're gonna be posting so much freaking content, they're gonna be right along with you, watching you grow and watching you change. Like I went from like hella gothic to like sarcastic millennial in six months and people liked it. So that ended up working out really well for me. All right, so we just need to be able to rethink social media. Instead of it being an addiction to likes, we need to be able to just think about it critically. Think of it as a marketing content channel, right? Plan ahead. Don't just be making for the sake of posting. That's ridiculous. You're gonna take so much time just like, okay, what am I gonna write? How many characters? Oh my God, the hashtags. Is, is this one too popular? This one's not popular enough, blah, 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 blah. It's like, <laughs> it's crazy. And also, you're gonna be checking your phone like every 10 minutes like, how many likes did I get? Damn it. How many new followers? Shit, none. <laughs> And that's time consuming, so instead, add it to the queue. Make something every single day, add it to the motherfucking queue, okay? So you have social media schedulers like Buffer, B-U-F-F-E-R, Buffer is amazing, I use it. Also Later, L-A-T-E-R, if you don't know how to spell Later for some reason, um, you can check out those platforms. It's amazing. And it completely takes out that addiction mindset of like, okay, now I'm gonna be on social media, and then like two hours later, you're like, oh crap, where'd my productivity go? And I was only supposed to spend 20 minutes on posting every day. Like, it'll save you so much time. And then also, I know posting like every single day in a social channel sounds a little daunting. A lot of you might be thinking, okay, wait, so you want me to like 
just always do a 365 project for the rest of my life. Like I have to have one finished completed piece every day. You have to be shitting me. <laughs> but there's so many other things you could be posting, like your process. Remember, the majority of the people following you are other creatives and designers. What do other creatives and designers like to see? Process. I don't need to just be inspired by your work. I want to know how you made it. Show me those dirty, dirty thumbnails that make no sense to, you, to anyone else but you. That chicken scratch, that shit's interesting. I want to see the unused concepts, the ink. I want to see close-ups of you working like just this close to your paper because you forgot your glasses this day and you're freaking out over stippling because it's the newest thing and it needs to look perfect. Show that struggle. And then even after the static image, Show a mock-up. Let me see your work in a real world scenario. And there you go, you just have one post and turned it into five. And finally, put yourself in your feed because I want to connect with you. I think it's crazy that I've been following some people for years. I love them, I talk about them all the time, but I have no idea what they look like. <laughs> That, just a picture like this, you go to a bar, you're about to meet your best friend, you've, you've known them for years. They come in, they walk in, and they have a paper bag on their head. <laughs> and even weirder, they have like their latest art piece on the paper bag. So like, it's gonna be a little awkward, and it's gonna naturally create some distance. So don't you think you're gonna be doing that on social media? Why did the rules change? It's because we're behind a screen. Let me get to know you. What does your face look like? Where do you live in the world? What is your office space like? What are you struggling with? A little bit pepper in the family, right? I don't wanna see like a bunch of highly curated images of what you ate that day, but I'm still very interested in your life. And I know you have to have a good balance between the personal and the professional, but if you're an independent freelance artist like me or hope to be an independent freelance artist like me, that's the kind of stuff you need to be putting out there, it's not all about work. It's about the artist behind the art. All right, let's get to the beta test. This is the whole point of how to do more of what works. So we've talked about posting consistently, all the barriers that are ridiculous that we're just creating for ourselves because we're the only ones in charge of our time. We're the only ones that decide what kind of stuff we're gonna be working on. Now, if you have a day job and stuff, I get that. I used to be that person working 40 hours and then an extra 20 hours to draw letters, but I eventually, because of posting consistently and really putting it to the grinder, man, I was able to make a shit ton of money and now I only work about 20 or 30 hours a week and I make a really good living. And now I'm officially first hired my fiance, who's taking a video of me right now. <laughs> Everyone clap for Rick for being amazing. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day where I would wear the pants in the family. <laughs> so how we can do more is when you're getting those comments coming in, you have to be listening to what people are actually saying. The likes aren't important because anyone can be like, tap, tap. That's freaking meaningless. Look at the comments where people are like, oh my God, the color scheme, amazing. <laughs> This composition is everything. The fire emojis, I don't know what to do about those. Stop posting them, they're not helpful. <laughs> Give me actual content. Actually, the algorithm prefers just for there at least to be two words in there, so just, but this is cool. Fire emoji, right? <laughs> like, it's supposed to emphasize content, not replace content, just as a heads up. Okay, so you're looking at your content. You wanna be looking out for things like, oh, I would love a shirt design of this. Can I hire you for work? because then you know those are the pieces that are getting the most engagement. Those are the ones that people took a second out of their crazy addicti screen addicted lives to comment. That means something. So you need to be looking at that and analyze your best work so then you can then put it and add it to those add to cart platforms. The most important one being your website. How amazing would it be if you knew for a fact that every single piece in your portfolio was amazing and everyone else thought it was amazing and it was a perfect representation of the kind of work that you love to do and that you want to get more work from. Because those of you who are thinking, oh shit, I have not updated my portfolio in like a year, you need to get on that because you're only gonna get hired for the work that you're presenting. So that really annoying logo design project you did for that client in that industry that you really don't give a shit about, you're just gonna get more of those clients contacting you. So just remove it. <laughs> so. 
Not only do we want to be able to push to those platforms like our curated portfolio, but we also want to be looking at things like selling out products. A lot of us don't have the money to invest for like t-shirt printing or poster printing or whatever cool thing that you want to make. So a great beta test is putting it on social media and promoting it by just the act of making it. I want every single one of you in here, the next time you have an idea, talk about it, tweet about it. When you start doing little sketches, put it on Instagram. When every single process you're hitting with that product or whatever that idea is, talk about it. And then throughout that whole time, you have photography, you have static images, you have all these graphics to use to then perfectly attract the people that you've been promoting to this whole time on your website. Or if you still are like, I can't afford products, there's things like Redbubble, Society6, Threadless, designed by humans, that is an extra barrier to entry as a beta test. So you can go ahead, put your work on those platforms, if you're an illustrator or designer, and actually be able to be like, oh, people actually like that one. And it turns out they like it on a mug more than they do a t-shirt. So I'm gonna take it off Redbubble, put it on my own platform, because I got double beta test. That people are definitely going to be interested in this product. So that way we can just take some of this guesswork out. It's so important, guys, that we actually just get over our fear of failure, because we all know that failure is a big part of this whole creative process, and just put it out there. Post every day, even if you barely did anything that day. Show your face, be out there, let me get to know you. Because that's what social media was always meant to be. It was a way for me to connect with someone that didn't live near me and for me to get to know people that I would never have the opportunity to meet and somehow it's turned into this vicious cycle of just feeling like crap and no one likes you and it's just, you get all these complexes and it just sucks. So let's stop this. We are the generation that's gonna make this difference. So let's stop it in its tracks, let's be successful along the way and just kill it. All right, don't forget, you can win stuff. So please, take pictures of me. I like to be <laughs> photographed. Talk to me, I like to talk. <laughs> I think we've established that. And just mention Letter Shop on either Twitter or Instagram. You guys can win all of my Lettering Adventure Zine series, free coaching, and I also have these little, I actually have literal swag bags where like the bag is the swag. Because now, because now, because you want another bag to carry around all day, right? So if you are interested in learning more about social media advertising, come up to me during lunch. Talk to me in between the breaks because I'm literally only here to help you. Thanks, guys.